Hello, let's continue with chapter 14, Chemical Equilibrium, part two. This is a slide number seven. So last time, we were describing the equilibrium process on a reversible chemical reactions. We have this equation here on the slide, H2 gas plus iodine gas to form hydrogen iodide gas. We are going to find a simple relationship between the concentrations of these reactives and products. And that relationship can be expressed the following way. So we have in this side products and reactives here. Reactives making products. We always read the reaction the way it is written. So that is the main reaction for this reversible reaction. The way it's written is reactives are H2 and I2 and the products here, in this case, the only product is HI. So we are going to find a relationship between concentrations of reactives and products and that relationship is going to be a ratio of products over reactives. So concentration of products over concentration of reactives. I wrote it initially this way, so you always remember the products over reactives. Concentration of products of, over reactives. So how do you write the concentration of products here? It's going to be concentration of HI the stoichiometric coefficient is 2 so that's the power of that concentration we don't have more products here over concentration of reactives we have two reactives so we have to express that as a product of the concentration of the reactives elevated to their stoichiometric coefficients. So let's start with hydrogen. So that means molar concentration of H2. The stoichiometric coefficient here is one. So the exponent here is one, we don't have to write it. Times is a factor, that's why you say the product of the molar concentration of reactives. Times 
The next reactive is HI, uh, I2 iodine. to the exponent, in this case, one. And this relationship between concentra molar concentrations of reactives, products over reactives, is called the mass action expression here. That is the name of this relationship. If we plug in equilibrium concentrations into this formula, then we will get a number. And that number is called equilibrium constant K. That equilibrium constant. Capital K. And this expression is what we call the mass action expression. Uh, so we can call it also the equilibrium law or the equilibrium constant expression, different ways to name it. And we can write this expression for any equilibrium situation. When you have, you see a, uh, the double arrow, that means you have a reversible reaction and you can write the equilibrium expression for this. You also need to take into account the states. Into this expression, you include only gases, gas phase, or aqueous solutions, aqueous solutions. You include into this expression anything that is in the gas phase or is in the aqueous solution, in the water solution. If the reaction contain, uh, and that's what we call homogeneous equilibrium, because it's, it's only one, in this case, only one phase. Everything is gas here. So it's homogeneous equilibrium. If a reaction contains, contains solids or pure liquids, you do not include those here, and we will we'll discuss that later. In general, we are going to write the generic equation. You remember how to write generic equations? So we have A plus B in equilibrium forming C plus D. How do you balance this generic equation? Let's balance, balance it using stoichiometric coefficients. What is the stoichiometric coefficient that balance the uh, A, compound A in this equation? You are using lowercase a represents any number, integral number. Remember, we balance chemical equations using the smallest integral number. So A represents the integral number that balances the equation. This is going to be 
our stoichiometric coefficient, lowercase b, lowercase c, and lowercase d. So we have a generic equation, a, b, and a, b, c, and d, capital letters, represents any chemical compound. So how do we write the mass action expression for that? Remember, it's a, relate, it's a ratio between products, concentration, molar, has to be molar concentration. That's why we're using square brackets. So let's start with the products. Always start with the products here. And make sure you have everything on the gas phase or AQS solution. That's the only thing you are going to include into, into the mass action expression. You will not include anything that is solid or pure liquid. So that will be molar concentration of C elevated to the exponent C, this one, the stoichiometric coefficient, times molar concentration of D elevated to its stoichiometric coefficient, lowercase d. We don't have more products here. Over molar concentration of A to the power A times molar, this is times. It's a factor, it's multiplication, times molar concentration of D to the power D, uh, sorry, here, B. Hmm. Let's go back here, B to the power B. And that relationship equals the equilibrium constant. Since we are writing the equilibrium constant in terms of molar concentrations, therefore this Kc will be, this K will be K sub C or Kc, K sub C, or equilibrium constant in terms of the molar concentrations. Always molar, moles per liter. So that is the famous Kc or K sub C. There's another way to express this, this mass action expression of, of this equil equilibrium law. If we have gases, we can express that in terms of partial pressures. I'll show you that in the next few slides. So let's see experimental results. We see in here that when we plug in equilibrium concentrations, we get a constant. But remember, that has to be equilibrium concentrations. When we do ice table, to do the analysis of the concentrations before um, at the equilibrium, initially change equilibrium. Should we plug here initial concentrations? No. Why not? Because we're trying to find equilibrium. And we know here initially there's no equilibrium. Probably not. It is possible. 
if you add the right amounts of species at equilibrium at temperature T. Remember, this is constant and equilibrium is reached if on, only at that temperature. If you change the temperature, then you disturb the equilibrium. So in order to get equilibrium constant, you need to plug in equilibrium concentration. So the numbers you get here at equilibrium in this part with your analysis, that will be equilibrium concentrations that you plug in here to find the equilibrium constant. So for the previous, A slide and this one we have equilibrium situation there and 204 in equilibrium with 2 no2 can we write that equilibrium expression there let's put it here Let's do that one, that's a good one. How to find the equilibrium constant. So we have the reaction um, N204, N204 gas in equilibrium with 2NO2, also gas. Let's write the mass action expression for this. That will be molar concentration of NO2 square. This square, this two here. There's nothing else here on the product, so over. And this is a gas, that's why I can put it here. This is also a gas, I can put it here. If this were pure liquid, so you won't write anything here and you have to write one over the other one that's supposed to be gas. Molar concentration of N2O4. Exponent is one. And that should give you a constant. Do you remember the molar concentration? So this at the equilibrium has to be molar concentrations at the equilibrium. The first one is 0 0.0292, 0 0.0. 0 yeah. Zero point zero two nine two. Um, the equilibrium concentration of the other one zero point zero one sixteen. Zero point zero one sixteen, and this is the equilibrium concentration. I'm just writing the equilibrium concentration. I'm not writing the whole ice table, and that's given. That's experimental result. So if we know the equilibrium concentrations, <clears throat> then we can plug that into this mass action expression. And that will be for this one, NO2, 0 0.0116 square over the equilibrium concentration of N2O4, which is 0 0.0292. You do this operation, please do it. And you get a number. And then since you are plugging in equilibrium concentration, that number, you're going to fill this up for me. That number is called K. 
sub c, equilibrium constant in terms of concentrations for that reaction. Sometimes we write that k sub c in front of the equation, that number, at that particular temperature. <clears throat> I don't, I didn't see temperature for this experiment. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, doesn't say, but let's assume if the temperature is not given, we can assume for the purpose of solving the problems, room temperature. And what is the thermodynamic room temperature? Is 25 degrees Celsius. 25 degrees Celsius. So room uh, thermodynamic thermodynamic conditions are temperature 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin. So it's that this 25 degrees Celsius plus to 73.15 Kelvin gives you the Kelvin. Uh, the pressure is one atmosphere and the concentration when needed is one molar. So if temperature is not given, we assume uh, room temperature, which is 298.15 Kelvin. A lot of times we just run that off to 298 Kelvin. Also notice that I'm using degrees Celsius and I'm not using degrees Kelvin. What a shame. It, because if we follow the SI system rules, degree is not used for Kelvin, just 298 Kelvin. You can say 25 degrees Celsius, or you can say 25 degrees Fahrenheit. You use degrees here, Fahrenheit, let's see, degrees Fahrenheit, but you don't use degrees Kelvin, just 298 Kelvin, and this is capital. And the symbol for temperature is capital T. What is this when you use this as a symbol? That's not temperature, that's time. And this is temperature. And showing you notation, how to write properly in chemistry. This is chemistry writing. All right. So do the homework, do this mathematical calculation on your calculator and write the constant. Now for this reaction, an experiment was conducted, actually four different experiments using different amounts of hydrogen and iodide. Let us establish the equilibrium and then the equilibrium concentrations were found. And this is what they get. Four different experiments. Uh, what temperature? Look. This is showing the experiment was conducted. All experiments at the same temperature. How many Kelvins are those? Homework. How many Kelvins? Okay. So let's see, let's see what numbers we have here. Now let me ask you uh, this before I continue. What happened if we, if we change the temperature? I mentioned this a couple of times that the equilibrium constant is a temperature dependent. That means if you change the temperature, you will disrupt the equilibrium here, these equilibriums, you break the equilibrium and the reaction will need to go 
to move around, go to the right or go to the left, that depends on the concentrations you have present in the reaction chamber. So they will start moving to the right or to the left until the system reaches a new equilibrium at the new temperature. If you change the temperature again, you break the equilibrium again, and the system will move dynamically, changing concentrations, until the system reaches the new equilibrium. So this experiment was conducted at 440 degrees Celsius. Uh, notice here, these are the amounts, initial amounts, that's what they put initially. One mole, one mole, zero, nothing. And they say, go, they will go, they will work it out, and then you measure the concentrations at the equilibrium. Here are the, the molar concentrations at the equilibrium. Here we have, this is the moles in 10 liters. So moles divided by 10 liters gives you this mol molarity. Always you need to write molarity. And then, and you have to be careful when you're writing the problems when you are reading the problems to see what you have, what the problem, what information the problem is giving. Sometimes the problem gives you moles, but also tells you the volume of the container so you can calculate the molarity. Sometimes the problem gives you molarity directly. So you have to be careful here. Do not assume a lot of people make the, uh, the mistake. They start running, doing calculations, and they start plugging in numbers, but they don't care about the unit. And that's when the mistake comes, because the results will be off. Off. Will be wrong. And you will kill the patient. You made, you misplaced the decimal place, the decimal point, and then you got a totally different number and you kill the patient. This is 0.222 moles in 10 liters. And the concentration is 0 0.0222 moles per liter. Here is wrong. It should say moles per liter, yeah, moles per liter, or simply 0 0.0222 molar, capital M, H2. So, you know, to correct that, I will be either delete this and leave it 0 0.0222 molar, H2, or add moles per liter. And then you have to delete this M. It's going to be redundant, right? Because molarity is equals to moles per liter. Per liter. The letters disappear, huh? Okay, moles. There you go. Moles per liter. So you write either one, not both. You write 0 0.0222 moles per liter, or you write 0 0.0222 molar H2. So be aware of that. Very important because that gives you the chance to explain extra stuff. Okay.
So those are equilibrium concentrations here. These are not concentrations. They are equilibrium amounts, but not concentrations. So you have to divide moles per, uh, over liters. Sometimes the problem gives you grams and gives you the total volume of the, of the container, of the reaction chamber. Reaction chamber, I use that word. I explain it on the, on, the, on the bad video, the video that you cannot hear anything. Reaction chamber is just a container, closed container where you add chemicals, you add chemicals and then you close the valves. Now it's closed, you put the conditions, pressure, temperature conditions, so the reaction go. So this is called the reaction. Chamber. Sometimes the test book talks about reaction vessel. Usually in, in the lab, uh, those chambers of vessels are made of stainless steel, very thick walls, so we can add high pressures inside, we can heat it up, we can cool it down. They're very useful devices in, in the chemistry lab, especially for uh, uh, research. Also industry uses huge reaction chambers. All right, so we have these molar concentrations. And if we plug that into the mass action expression for this equilibrium, and what is the mass action expression for the equilibrium? K sub C equals concentration of H I square over concentration of H I times, oh sorry, I got so excited here writing this here. Yeah. Now doesn't want to raise, oh, okay. Let's erase all, everything. Okay. So what is the correct? Yeah, I'm using this equation here concentration of H2, concentration of H2 times concentration of I2 times, I have seen a lot of students sometimes writing plus here or minus or division, weird things, very weird. It's the definition of the mass action expression is talking about product. The product between these two products as a operation, multiplication. Okay. So if we plug in these equilibrium concentrations into this, we should get a number. Now, under the same temperature, look, they did another experiment. They added, they didn't add the hydrogen. They added 0.1 I, I2, 3.50 moles of HI, and those are the equilibrium concentrations they found. Their experiment, same temperature, but they added different. Now, this time, they didn't add, uh, the initial amount of I2, but they found equilibrium concentrations of everything. This time they just added the product. And not initially, nothing of this, nothing of this. However, at the equilibrium, they found these concentrations. When we plug this, 
equilibrium concentrations into this expression, look what happened. Look, let's check the results. Look, plugging in the equilibrium concentrations into the mass action expression. On the first one, you get 49.4, the next one, 49.8, 49.4, 49.5. 49 we get average of this, we get 49.5. They are about the same. Some deviation as expected from any experiment, but they behave constantly. They, this number behaves as constant, so we can say that the average represents the constant for that mass action expression. And so we can say the equilibrium constant for that reaction at that temperature is 49.5. No units, no units on the constant. You can find units, but the units are meaningless. We are not interested in that, so you will never see uh, the units being represented for the equilibrium constant. We will see only the number, in this case 49.5. And we are interested on that number. And we are looking on how big is the number or how small is the number. If the number is big, that means, oh, let's check here. So we found the equilibrium, con the equilibrium constant. Uh, is 49.5. No units. Um, basically, we want to know how big is the number. If equilibrium constant is bigger than one, if the equilibrium constant is equals to one, or if the equilibrium constant is less than one. Basically, that is all what we want to know about the equilibrium constant. And from these results, we can make interesting uh, analysis and predictions about how the reaction can move, can shift from, from, from the right to the left or from left to right. So we can make, uh, make adjustments to push the reaction to go to the forward reaction or to make, make it go to the left. And also will tell you how easy it's going to be. For example, this one, we have a big number, it's bigger than one. It's much bigger than one, right? Bigger. That means at equilibrium, at equilibrium, this reaction is making what? A lot of products or a lot of reactives what is what do you think h2 gas plus i2 gas forming 2 h i gas and this is at equilibrium so at equilibrium this is the equilibrium constant bigger than one, it's telling you what? 
at the equilibrium, the reaction is going forward mainly, or is going to the reverse mainly? What did I say? The ratio. Analyze this ratio here. How will you get a big number bigger than one? The only way to get a big number bigger than one is when this number is bigger than this number. So this product here, when you plug in the numbers, this product, and what is this? Those are reactives. The reactive side, and this is the product. reactives the number in the denominator has to be smaller than the number on the numerator and the number on the numerator is representing the concentration of products so this number has is big much much bigger than this number that comes from this product when you plug in equilibrium concentrations. So that means at the equilibrium, we have little of this, little of this, and a lot of that. And we can see it here. Look, little, little, a lot. Little, little, a lot. Compare be between them. So this is much, much bigger. This is like 10 times bigger than this. Look, and you keep the same ratio, same proportion. That's why you got constant every time. Little, little, a lot. So little, little, a lot at equilibrium. That's the main important analysis of this. When you, see, you observe the value of the equilibrium constant. The number is bigger than one. That means at the equilibrium, the reaction is making a lot of products. So the main reaction here is the reaction that goes to the right, the forward reaction. Forward, forward reaction. For this particular reaction at that temperature. Of course, it's an equilibrium, right? So that means the the reverse reaction is happening too at the same speed. But the tendency of this reaction is to make more products. Even though they are going at the same speed, it's making a, lots of products. So sometimes we represented this in terms of what size making more. So the forward is making more products than the reverse. Still valid that the speed of the forward reaction is equal to the speed of the reverse reaction. That's the equilibrium condition. You cannot break that condition. But here this the length of these arrows shows the magnitude of or tendency to make products in terms of amounts. And that's given by the value of the constant. What happened when the equilibrium constant equals one? That means you have equals amounts at the equilibrium equals amounts of these two uh, numbers here. At the equilibrium, this product equals this one. The equilibrium of the product. So that, that means the reaction is easily shifted from right to left, from left to right. It's, it's balanced. It's at equilibrium. It's not making a lot of products. At the equilibrium, you have some of this, some of this, and about the same amount of that. It's like it's not going anywhere. 
it's like it gets stuck somewhere at the equilibrium. What happens when the equilibrium is less than one? Like you have 0, 0.0 something less than one. Like for example, the equilibrium constant is 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. You see, it's less than one. This is zero point. This is zero point zero 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 one eight. Very small. Right. So when you see uh, it's in, in scientific notation, a small numbers are presented this way times ten to the negative five. That means you have a number less than one. What does it mean in terms of what's hap what what is going on? at the equilibrium for this reaction. What do you have there? That means, how do you get the number first? Small number out of here, this relationship. In order to get a very small number here, you need to have this number small and this number high. This number and the denominator has to be higher than the numerator in order to get less than one. So this is small number and this is small number at the equilibrium represents the product. And these numbers, this number here, higher, represents the reactives. So in other words, at the equilibrium, there's more reactives than product. That means that at the equilibrium, the main reaction is the reverse reaction. Still, we have equilibrium situation. Some of the reaction goes to the opposite direction because remember, they are reversible. But if we use these arrows to show the tendency to make products, this will show it. The equation as it is written that way is making very little products. So basically when you put those two to react to make two HI, it will not make a lot of this. If you are owner of this industry, you will be in a really bad situation because somebody told you, hey, why don't you buy hydrogen gas, which is very cheap, you get iodine, let's say it's cheap, and you can extract it from, from ocean. You can extract this from air. No, not really. Uh, you can get this. They say cheap and cheap. And somebody tells you, and, and this is really expensive. You can sell this and you can make a really good money with this. And you go very happy. You invest a lot of millions, putting up the industry, buy this, buy this, put it to React, 440 uh, Kelvin sorry, uh, degree Celsius, and guess what? Well, this one will make. The... All right. So let's say if that reaction, the reaction, not this one, because this one uh, has a higher but in this one, you invest a lot of money and, the, and that reaction has a very low equilibrium constant and the reaction, the forward reaction to the right is very small. You are not going to get the product and you will wait and wait and wait and that reaction every time makes you very little amount. You put a lot of amount. 
Why? Why? Because it's at the equilibrium. At the equilibrium, the reaction shifted, shift mainly to the left. At the equilibrium, you go and we'll see the reactives still intact. It will make HI, and at the same speed, it will make back dose. So that's, that's the indication of equilibrium constant less than one. So that's very important information you can get from here, from these numbers. And you can make predictions, you can make adjustments. Um, later, I'll show you applications of that. Okay. Remember, initially I mentioned, mentioned it in an important tool to know or to make predictions if the reaction shifts to the right or to the left. This is the one. It's called equilibrium uh, reaction quotient. Okay, yeah, so let's talk about reaction quotient. So let's suppose we use the same initial reaction. We have H2 gas plus I2 gas in equilibrium with 2HI gas. If we write concentrations here, that will be initial concentrations, the change on the equilibrium concentrations. So let's say uh, we have initial, let's say, let's use one of those numbers. We have initial amounts. Let's use a one liter container. In one liter container. Should we? Oh, let's use the 10 liters. So we can use the same numbers here. And let's use that one, the one that, this one, we have, oh, this one has, uh, doesn't have an amount, initial amount of I2. This one doesn't have initial amount of H2, and this one doesn't have initial amounts of HI. I want to use one that has at least the product. That could be this one. This one. Has at least one product and one reactive. So if we use that one, here in 10 liters. So that will be this number of moles divided by 10 liters. That will be 1.5 times 10 to the negative three. This number divided by 10 will be 0 0.00150, which is 1.5 times 10 to the negative three. That's the number I want to use, and this is for hydrogen. So initially, there we have one point five times ten to negative three. Okay. 
1.5 times 10 to the negative 3. Let's suppose we have the same amount. So that will be 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3. And the initial concentration of HI on that experiment is 1.27 moles divided by 10 liters that will be 0 0.127. So that will be 1.27 uh, times 10 to negative one. We can, this is one number, we can write it down. 0 0.127, 0 0.127. Zero point one twenty seven molar. Remember here always write molar concentrations. What is the change here? If we go the uh, direction, we really don't know because you have initial amounts of everything, so you don't know if these amounts are equilibrium amounts. But we know this is going to change. This is going to change plus or minus x and here plus or minus x and here is going to change plus or minus 2x. Why we don't know it as positive or negative? Because we don't know if you put these initial amounts in what direction will shift to reach the equilibrium? It may go to the right. In that, case, in that case, that will be negative, negative plus. Or it may go to the left. In that case, that this will be negative, plus, and plus. We'll figure out in a few minutes. And the equilibrium concentrations were found at least we know that. We are talking about the experiment number three, right? This one, the equilibrium concentration. This is already concentration. They're already, already moles divided by liters. Moles divided by 10 liters. So we have number three. The equilibrium concentrations is measured. You don't have to do it. It's already measured experimentally. So at the equilibrium, they found Let's put this in different color. This is going to be interesting. Let's use this one. The equilibrium concentrations. It's going to be zero, zero point, zero one fifty, zero one fifty. And here, 0 0.0135, and over here, the equilibrium concentration is 0 0.1, 0, 0. Okay, it's correct. And we write the equilibrium expression. We do, we do this many times until we get used to it. Concentration of HI square over concentration of H2 times concentration of I2. And we know, we know the number is 49 
0.5. When you plug, what do you plug here in order to get this number? Do you plug this initial? Do you plug the change or do you plug the equilibrium? Well, yes. You plug only the equilibrium, equilibrium concentrations in order to get equilibrium constant. Don't forget, this is called equilibrium. Constant. Capital K. You cannot write this lowercase like this. No. Wrong. This is correct. Equilibrium constant. Equilibrium means equilibrium concentrations. So what is the difference between look, compare this expression Q with this expression? Let me write it here so you can compare side to side. Equals concentration of H I two over concentration of H two times concentration of I two. What is the difference between these two expressions? This is the mass action expression. And you see here, it's exactly the same shape, same mass action expression. However, this is called Q, um, K sub C, and this is called Q. Q sub C, because we are using molar concentrations. It's the same shape, exactly the same. However, the two numbers are call in the different way. This one is equilibrium constant. Why are you calling this equilibrium constant? Well, yes, because you are using equilibrium concentrations, this one. That gives you this. What about this one? On this one, you plug this. into the same expression and you will get something that is called the reaction. The reaction quotient, reaction quotient, this is another number. On the first expression, mass action expression, you plug equilibrium concentration on the Q sub C, reaction quotient expression, you plug only initial concentrations. And then you compare the two of them, and you will have, again, three different situations. You will find that your Q sub C is bigger than Q K sub C, or you will find that Q sub C equals K C, or you can find that Q sub C is less than your KC, the KC for that reaction. Three different situations. Comparing the reaction quotient to the equilibrium constant for that reaction. Remember, everything is happening at the same temperature. And then we compare and we do analysis, critical thinking. There, we have initial, initial concentrations, 
so we can plug there. Let's do it. So you will see, you will see how I'm doing the process. So Q sub C, I want to do it here. And I got to plug only initial concentration, remember this one? So it says Q sub C equal, let me write everything here for you. Actually, I can do it here. I can do it here. Let me just delete this. Okay, and let's use our red again. Let's plug those numbers here. What is the con initial concentration? Remember here, initial concentration. Initial concentrations, initial concentration. Here, equilibrium concentration. That's the big difference. Equilibrium concentration. So the initial concentration of a HI here is, Zero point one two seven square. Don't forget those exponents. You have to look carefully. You the shape of your mass action expression so you don't miss any exponent. Over concentration of H I. Uh, sorry, H two, which is one point five. times 10 to the negative three times concentration of I2, which is exactly the same. We added the same amounts, 1.5 times 10 to the negative three. You do this, you spend your time, practice, and then you will realize, as you are practicing, you realize that you have some mathematical tools that help you to simplify your calculations. And you will find that this number times this number equals that number square. A times A equals A square. Those, these are the mas basic definitions in math, basic math. If you forget about this basic math, I would suggest go talk to your little brother, to your little sister, your cousin that is on third grade. Ask them to lend you the math textbook. All these are there in elementary school. Sometimes we forget those basic math skills because we never use it again. You are in, in, involved in some calculations. You've been taking courses recently, handling numbers and doing calculations like a math or calculus. You will remember this easier and you can apply that a lot easier and it will come naturally to you. But if you haven't handled these numbers and these algebraic equations and rules, probably you forget and you need to go back. But right now, don't wait. All right. So, just plug in all the numbers there. This, remember this is a square, 1.5 times 10 to the third. A square will be 1.5 times 10 to negative six. And then just square this. So, 
basically and you plug this uh, into your calculator and what do you get so take your calculator out and start doing the operation pause the pause the recording the video do the calculation and then come back with your number and doing it now so on top i have i my scientific calculator here i have zero point 127 square and that is i got what do you get i got zero point zero one six one since we have three significant figures we only need three significant figures the next number is two so i don't have to run that off and on the bottom is 1.5 times 10 to negative 1.5 times 10 to negative 6. Times 10 to negative 6. I'll put it here again. Okay. 1.5. Times 10 to negative 6, because is this number is square. So that's another property, right? You have 10 to the A, and then you elevate that to a power B. The result equals 10 to the A times B. You have to go back and refresh all these uh, properties. And then we do the division, divide it by. One point five times ten to the negative six And in this calculator, I can find the plus or minus to switch the sign. So I have to do again 0 0.0 161 divided. What is my division here? Divided by 0 0.0111. Two, three, four, five, one, five. That will be one point five times ten to neg negative six equals ten. Equals what? 
10.7. That's the reaction quotient is in the initial conditions we put on that particular experiment there at that temperature. And now we compare. What situation we had there? Which one of those? Yes, this one. So Q is 10.7 and K is 49.9. Therefore, Q sub C, oh, I put it, I just realized here, and you didn't tell me, huh? You kept quiet. Here I want I was I wanted to say oh I think I said it I, I wrote it on the opposite Q sub C less than K C Q sub C bigger than K C Q sub C equals K C Q sub C less than K C and that's our case. This is ten point seven is less than forty nine point five means what? means what? Means that, let me simplify the reaction A plus B, making C. That's that reaction, right? H2 plus I2 to form 2HI. KC tells you that the reaction makes a lot of products. Q sub C, is telling you that the ratio of concentration is 10.7. That ratio, this ratio here, needs to go up. Right now it's under. The rate, this ratio is under this. So we need to increase that number. That means we need to make more of this and less of this. Make sense? We need to bring this up, up to 49.5 to reach the equilibrium. That's what we want. We want to reach the equilibrium. We want to know in what direction the reaction will shift to the right or to the left to reach the equilibrium from this position, this initial position, these initial conditions. So using the initial conditions, we know the actual position is 10.7, still below the desired equilibrium condition, which is 49.5. That means the quotient needs to make more, needs to increase the number. How do we increase the number? How the reaction needs to change these concentrations to shift the number? Well, the reaction is to work in the way that makes this number bigger. And this is the product. This needs to go up. And since that goes up, those will go down. What is that? Consuming, producing. That means the reaction needs to shift in that direction from products to make reactives. The reaction is, needs to shift from right. Sorry, I, I, I said the opposite here. Now my eraser seems like uh, it's not working. Let me, let's choose uh, medium size eraser. Oh, okay, it's gone. Yeah. Uh, it's going to, from reactives to products. That means from left, oh, I say everything totally opposite. Mm. 
Well, I said it right, but I, I wrote it opposite. From left to right, it's going from left, this direction, direction from left to right, from reactants to products to establish the equilibrium. From this position, these initial conditions, the reaction will shift to the right to establish the equilibrium. That is the information we get when we compare the value of K sub C with the value of Q sub C. From here, we can make conclusions. What would happen when Q C is bigger than K C? That means the reaction needs to shift to the left, from right to left. So that means the products needs to go down and reactives needs to go up until the equilibrium reaches, the, the, the system reaches the equilibrium. And what is this? What happened is your initial concentrations, you put the initial concentration and then you plug into here and you get a number which is exactly the same as the equilibrium concent, uh, constant. That means your system is already at equilibrium. You see how important is this number? And we get a lot of important information from there. That's what I want to spend a good amount of time explaining you in detail what happened at the molecular level during the chemical equilibrium, how to do these calculations, how to do the analysis, how to do the critical thinking. So you can apply all these concepts to solve problems and to better understand the equilibrium situation. The next, all right, we did that already. We did this already. Again, I am skipping this because I did it already. However, I recommend you stop and go over this uh, slides, spend time there reading and if you find something that concerns you, go back and listen to my previous explanation here, Com comparing different situations for the value of K sub C, when K sub C is bigger than one, there are more products than reactives, when K sub C equals one, we have about the same amount of reactives and products, and when K sub C is less than one, you have more reactants than products at equilibrium. All right. This part changes the, the tone of what we've been doing. We can play with the equilibrium expressions and we can do operations, simple operations, this is like a, something to memorize. And you memorize this by practicing. You practice, practice, until it becomes second nature because now it's storage in your brain and, and I hope it stays there at least for a while. Look this operation here. Let me show you this operation, how it works. How to operate the mass action expression and how to operate the equilibrium constant. Those are some tricks, how to handle this uh, information. Look this equation here. PCL3 plus CL2 to form PCL5. Phosphorus tetrachloride plus chlorine gas to form phosphorus pentachloride. 
we write the equilibrium expression for that, and you are very familiar with that, and you are already fast writing these equilibrium expressions that equals concentration of PCL5 here over concentration of PCL3 times concentration of CL2. That's the equilibrium expression for the first uh, equation, this one. Look, on the second equation, what do you see? This, compare this one to this one. You will notice immediately that the second equation of prime equation, or equation number two, is exactly the reverse of the first one. Now this is written in the reverse way. PCL5 decomposing to form PCL3 and CL2. So they are related because this one is the opposite of that. If you find that situation, there's a trick to calculate the new equilibrium constant for the second one because you already know the first one. Let's suppose you already know the, this one. The second one, when you write it down, like this expression, you will notice immediately that this expression is the inverse of that expression. Therefore, the new equilibrium constant is the inverse of the previous equilibrium constant. So we say K prime, yeah, K prime, you see this one, K prime, oh my God. Oh, here it is. equals the inverse of the first one, because this is the reverse of the one. So conclusion, the equilibrium constant of a reverse equation equals the inverse of that equation. sometimes very useful, that information. So you don't have to write all this down. You know, this is the inverse of that. So the new equilibrium, the prime equilibrium constant equals the inverse of the original one. That's one operation. Second operation. That is when you reversed an equation. Second operation. In this operation, notice that this is the initial with the initial equilibrium constant there and the initial expression for that. And this is the new equation here. Compare the two of them. Compare this one. with this one, what do you see? It's exactly the same here. Oh, no, it's inversed, right? Uh, it's, it's still inverse. However, however, this is, this is the reverse. This is the reverse of that plus we did something else. It's multiplied by a number, by two, by a factor of two. You can multiply an equation by a factor, any factor, two, three, four, five. Integral number. When you multiply an equation by a number, you have to multiply every species in the equation. So in this case, this one 
was multiplied by two. Just look here, two, two, and two. Two times one, two times one, two times one. If there was here uh, three, so it's going to be two, six, two. All species multiply exactly by the same number, in this case two. So we say it's double. So we double the equation. And not only that, we inverse inverse it. So the new equation, we have, we have two operations combined here. Let's say, let's do the first operation here. Let's multiply everything by two first without inver in, inverting the equation. Two, two, two. So the new KC, and that's the new rule for you, the KC prime, the KC prime is equals to KC square. KC prime equals KC square. So what is the rule? Do you get it? If you multiply by the number, the new constant is elevated to the number. If you multiply by three, the new constant KC prime equals KC, the original constant, elevated to the factor, to the number, in, in that case, three. If you multiply by four, then the exponent will be four. Since we multiply only by two, the exponent here is a square. So that is the, the second rule. This k prime. And that's what we did here. But we not only uh, double the equation, we not only multiply it by two, we also inverted the equation. Um, this is wrong here. Um, for the inversion, what happened? What do you do? What operation do you do when you invert? Remember the previous one is one over. So the real, the real here, we can cross this. It's wrong. Cross it out. That's wrong. So the no equilibrium constant will be one over kc square. That is correct. Now, when we add equations, we can add equations too. There's another operation, addition of equations, chemical equations. Like for example, we have equation A, or sometimes we write equation one and equation two, and then we add the two equations to get the overall equation. This is called the overall. And you add these two, add one and two to get the overall. Overall equation. Is the addition. It seem, it's very simple to add. Just compare, you see the two equal signs here, the double arrow. You add everything to the left of the arrow together. And then you add everything to the right of the arrow together. You can simplify if you have one, the same thing in both sides across the arrow, the arrows then you can simplify. For example here, notice that we have two and O, two and two O's as a product. And on the second reaction, we have two and two O as a reactive. So N two O is in both sides, product and reactive. Here is being produced and here is being consumed in the same amount. So 
basically you cancel out when you are adding these two equations. Here, uh, nothing else is repeated in both sides. So we cannot simplify more. Another situation is, for example, let's say this is making four and here only two are being consumed. You still can simplify, but you need to respect that proportion, right? Since here is four and here is two, then you cancel this and leave here only two. So from four goes down to two and you cancel th this one. That situation may happen. In our particular case here, this one, the real one, we have two and two, so both cancel out, nothing left over for this. So let's start adding. Two and two here, write it down. Plus, plus, what is next? O2. Yeah. And notice that here also we have two as a reactive. Remember, we are adding everything on the left hand side of the equal sign of the arrow. Everything on the left together. So 102 and 302, that gives you 402s. That's why we're right here. There's nothing else here. We can solve this out. Now we go to the other side. We write equal, double arrow, and write what is on the other side. And we notice that there's only four NO2. Here it is. We added, we just added two equations. Very simple process. The question is, and this is equation number three. Equation number three. What is the equilibrium constant for the new equation three? You can do that process, plug in, and of course, this is valid. Right in the expression, we know is concentration of NO2 to the four power over concentration of N2 square here times concentration of O2 to the four power. But we can simplify that knowing this rule. And we know that when we add two equations, we just multiply their equilibrium constants. Kc1 times Kc2 gives you the value of the new added equation. That's it. Very simple. This is very useful. Uh, probably we have to use this a couple of times in the future, in the next one or two chapters. So don't forget that. Uh, initially, also, uh, I was uh, mentioning that you can write the equilibrium constant in two different ways. So let's write, let's use again, let's use uh, our signature equation. And our signature equation is uh, has to be green. I like green for the equation. I like it. Oh, you went crazy. Okay. Let's see. It's not picking up. It's not picking up. Okay, now, nope, no, it's going crazy. All right, let's do it here. Let's just change the color. Our signature equation is uh, H2 
gas times, let me try again, times uh, N2. No, oh, it didn't. Gas to form, guess what? What do you guess? I think this has a delay behavior. Now it's doing the race. Okay. What is your guess? NH three, right? Ammonia. Ammonia gas. Ammonia is a gas. Remember, we can dissolve the gas into water to get ammonium hydroxide solution or ammonia water solution. This is our signature equation. Uh, we need to balance this. That will be three here. I hope I can erase now. Okay. It will it will show erased later because he's behaving. Um, ah, you see, has some delay there. Okay. So the clear, let's write the clearing expression for this. K sub C equals, I hope you can hear me concentration of NH3. What is the exponent? Yes, two over concentration of H2. What is the exponent? Yes, three times concentration of N2. What is the exponent here? One, we don't need to write it. And this is called equilibrium constant. Now, since those are gases, remember gases have a special behavior as ideal gases, and we can use the ideal gas law which is PV equals NRT. And notice that when we rearrange this pressure equals number of moles over volume equals RT. Oh, sorry, no equals times RT. And what is this? N over B, the smaller concentration. So Pressure equals molarity times RT or molar concentration. And we can we can uh, rearrange this in the molar concentration M equals P over so there's a relationship there between the molar concentration and, and pressure R and T. Do you remember what is R? The universal gas law. And we can write the pressures in terms of uh, the relationship the, of moral concentration. And that will give you the partial pressure, partial pressure of the gases. And we have gases here. So since we have gases, then we can express uh, 
these concentrations in terms of parcel pressures here. And if we do that, we also get the constant, but this time the constant is going to be called K sub P. That means equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressures. So partial pressure of a gas, yeah? partial pressure of a gas equals concentration times RT. And the equilibrium constant will be, we have a shape of exactly the same shape, but instead of using concentrations, we are going to use partial pressures. So partial pressure, this is how you write partial pressure. Partial pressure of NH3, same shape, square, over, Instead of writing concentration, we write partial pressure of uh, this is hydrogen gas H2. Oops. Okay. Eraser there. And now we have to wait until the actual erase. Eraser shows the result. And then we will write that. You see? Partial pressure of H two times the partial pressure of N2. Any exponent here? Yes, cubed, and uh, here is one. So this is the new shape of the expression, the, the same expression. So you can express the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration using this one, or in terms of partial pressures, this one. And this is called the K sub P in terms of partial pressures. And there's a relationship. When we, we plug this, we plug this into here, and since this is constant, and this is constant, you will get partial pressures here, they cancel out. And there's a way to convert K sub P into K sub C or vice versa. And that comes from the ideal gas law I just show. And this is the conversion formula here. Very, very useful piece of formula. To convert, if you know K sub C, you can convert it to K sub P. The only thing you need to know to remember is the gas constant, since this is ideal gas behavior, so you use 0 0.082 as a gas constant. And temperature of the system, that's a thermodynamic temperature in Kelvin. And this one, this expression here, that represents the number of moles of the gas change during the reaction, which is the moles of the products minus moles of the reactants. Let me show you an example to explain that. Here are uh, some misconceptions, no misconceptions, some mistakes done when finding the number. So let me use the same former equation, H2 gas plus N2 gas in equilibrium to form ammonia. 
gas, this is two, and this is three, is the system is at equilibrium. And let's suppose we know Kc for this reaction. I don't have it right now. Let's suppose we know that number and the problem asks you find the new the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressures, K sub P. So this is given and they ask him for this. How do you do that? And you can do it two ways. If you have partial pressures, just plug this into the into the expression. If you know the partial pressures, just plug the partial pressures here and you get K sub P. But if you already have, if you already know K sub C, this value, you can use this formula also, this one, K sub P equals K C times R P to the delta N of gases. You can plug it there. Everything is fine, except here, delta no gases, and a lot of people get confused, and that's what I'm going to explain. What is the delta N of gases? Some people think that you need to use number of moles given in the problem. They say it's, uh, 0.3 moles of these were added into container 0.5 moles of this were added to container and at the equilibrium we have uh, X moles of ammonia. Those e e moles given. No, has nothing to do with that. This delta N, the change of moles of gases in the equilibrium has nothing to do with the moles given in the problem here. This refers only the change of gases on the balanced chemical equation, the stoichiometric relationship. So this that N refers to these stoichiometric coefficients only. And since we're talking about the delta, the change, that will be moles of gases in the product minus moles of gases on the reactives. So that's going to be moles of gas on the product minus number of moles of gases on the reactives. And then the moles, yeah, moles. And these moles refers only to these stoichiometric coefficients, only. No, by moles given in the problem, how many moles you have, um, were added, or um, equilibrium moles, no. Only these stoichiometric coefficients. So for that reaction, how many moles of gases we have here? Remember, only gases, only gases are involved here. Here we have all gases, so we, we are fine. If this, there are gases and liquids and aqueous, so you include count only moles of gases, those stoichiometric moles. So in the products, we have two moles minus moles on the reactives. How many moles on the reactives we have? Here we have two moles, that's N. And here we have three plus one here, that's four. So two minus four, two minus four equals minus two. So, in that case, K sub P, we plug in K sub C. Usually this is given, one of those is given. So we just need to convert from here to there, or from there to there. 
times RT to what power? Negative two. We know that is given the 0 0.082 universal gas constant. If not, you just go to the paper I showed you last time on formulas and equation constant is there or your textbook. Our uh, temperature is given. Just don't forget to use uh, absolute temperature, Kelvin. Plug in and find the new value, K sub C. K sub P. Usually what you need to do, notice that this is negative two, you say, how do you do that? It's very simple because it's Kc times one over RT. Remember the exponent covers both both terms here. This equation, look at the equation here. The, look at this parenthesis. This is, this, this is the exponent for this product together. Common mistake, people do this. When, when somebody tries to simplify because I'm on a rush, because I'm very, very good on doing things on a rush, and then they do this. I have seen it. Look, what do you think? Is this the same as this? I connect with this equation. What would you do? You will say, RAM. It's not the same. That introduces error. You all calculation will be wrong. You kill the patient because you will get a number that is not correct. You kill the patient. And then you go to the widow or to the, you say, sorry, I did everything right. I just made a little mistake here and I got a little change number there. So instead, instead of giving to your wife or to your husband 0 0.5, I gave him 5.0. Very little mistake, I just put the point in the wrong place i sorry, but that killed your wife or your, your wife or your husband. You killed the patient because you were in a rush. That happens. That happens many times. So be careful, don't rush. Especially when you are practicing at home, take your time, do it, write it down. Take your time and do it many times. And you will notice that every time you do it, you go in faster. And you do more times, you do, you do it faster. But right, when you go to the test, you don't even need to do it because you are processing this on your head, on your brain. That's the beauty of having discipline and sitting down and doing the right things. Your patient will be safe with you. The husband and wife will be very gra gra grateful with you. The next. And I think this is the last one for this section is classification of homogeneous and heterogeneous reaction. I mentioned it at the beginning. 
homogeneous and heterogeneous equilibrium. Homogeneous when like the ones that we've been doing where all species are gases, right? Like H2 plus N2 to form NH3 gas. You see, all species are gases. Yeah, gas, gas. So we have homogeneous, same phase. We say this is the gas. The system is in a gas phase. Or we can say on the gas state. Homogeneous. It could be either gas phase or aqueous phase. That's homogeneous. You say homogeneous equilibrium. Homo. Genius equilibrium, homogeneous reactions. And you plug all this into the mass action expression or into your gas law. However, sometimes we have a mix. Between gases, aqueous, even solids. And that is when we call it heterogeneous reactions. This is not necessarily an equilibrium here. You may establish a very little equilibrium. This mainly is a, a, a forward reaction, moves forward to basically completion very spontaneous. So that means that if we are to write the equilibrium for this, it's going to have a huge number. The equilibrium constant for these uh, forward reactions are huge because they move towards the completion. But let's suppose we can write the equilibrium constant just to for the sake of demonstrating how to write the equilibrium in the heterogeneous uh, reaction. In the heterogeneous reaction, you include, again, only gas phase or aqueous. You do not include solids or pure liquids. So if we were to write this equilibrium expression here, the equilibrium k sub c will be, let's write everything to see what happened, will be concentration of Na2 CO3 times concentration of H2O times concentration of CO2. You see there's some delay there to show the writing over concentration of uh, NaH, CO3, sodium bicarbonate, square. Let's not forget that, that square there. And I said, do not include solids or pure liquids. What species here are solid or pure liquids? This is solid. We should get rid of that. This is solid. We should get rid of that. Leaving only concentration of H2O times concentration of CO2. Only gases for this reaction. Or aqueous, when you have aqueous. 
the reason is that during the equilibrium, the change of concentrations of solids and pure liquids is very small, very small change. And the concentrations of the solids basically remain constant during the whole process, before and after the equilibrium. So this is a constant, this becomes a constant and this becomes a constant. So you can say that this constant here prime times, oh, I have to write it here, let me put it here. K sub C there will become like constant. And in this case, lowercase constant. Not talking, we are not talking about the equilibrium constant, which is capital K. I'm talking here about a number that is constant. We're saying th this is a solid here, and this solid will, the concentration of that solid will remain constant during the whole process before and after the equilibrium. So that number, the number represents that concentration, remains constant. We call constant prime. times concentration of H2O times concentration of CO. This concentration, since those are gases, they will change. So they are important. What about on the bottom? This one is also a solid. So that concentration of that solid also will remain constant, that producing another constant number K double prime. Mathematically, when you divide a constant by a constant, you get a constant. Times H2O times concentration of CO. And if we move around these terms, then we'll have a equilibrium constant divided by a constant number. You see, it started getting crazy just the last minute. Is somebody on the other side moving my, ma my, my mouse? I'm wondering. Maybe somebody's tricking me. Maybe one of you. I'm just kidding. So the equilibrium constant divided by this constant, which is a number, gives concentration of H2O, which is a gas, and that concentration is changing, times concentration of CO2. And what is this? Constant divided by constant is just the constant. That is included everything there into the constant. So that's why we do not include solids or pure liquids into the mass action expression. Get rid of those. Okay. 
that's it. I'm going to leave it here for now. This is the last slide of this part. And the next slide, in the next show, I'll continue from here, showing uh, other properties of the equilibrium, and especially Le Chatelier's principle. We discussed Le and apply Le Chatelier's principle on the first experiment. Um, I'll give you uh, information about the meaning and applications of Le Chatelier's principle. All right. So see you next time.